we have the unexplained rock trolls. And instead of explaining them in song, they sing a song that's too long and too pointless. Square shaped weirdness of his feet. Hey! And though we know he washes well, he always ends up sort of smelly. But you'll never meet a fellow oh, who's as sensitive and sweet. That's nice, but so he's a bit of a fixer upper. Stupid song that actually diverts from the main plot, adds nothing, and ruins the atmosphere and is a general waste of time later. We finally hear the cure for Anna's frozen stiffness and her ice heart. And it's a cliche as old as time. Only an act of true love can thaw a frozen heart. An act of true love? True love. Again, this movie fails to disappoint in how much it relies on cliché while pretending to be against them. Christoph rushes Anna off to Hans and... Wait, I'm forgetting something. Um, oh shit, that's right. Elsa gets captured <laughs> after having an... Ex Actually, interesting fight scene against people whose motivations are wafer thin. The boring and pointless scenes in this movie are so powerful, they're actually numbing my brain to the kind of interesting ones. Now, Elsa is knocked unconscious and even though everyone who was there wants her dead, even our gingery forced plot twist, they still take her all the way back to the town whose name I forget. Why? For the other painfully obvious plot twist, of course. Gender plot twist happens. Oh, Anna. If only there was someone out there who loved you. What? Walking away with this movie's single opportunity to be kind of mature by not having an actual bad guy. I guess that was too complex for the infants this movie was targeted at. Anna is near death. And... This would be suspenseful, but everyone knows this movie is too castrated to actually kill anyone, and the comedy relief frees her from having to hold up a scene, as brief as it may be, on her own. They realise that the three-day romance can save her instead of the overnight one. It's Kristoff and Sven! They're coming back this way! They, they are? Help me up, Olaf. Please. No, 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 no. You need to stay by the fire and keep warm. I need to get to Kristoff. Why? <gasps> oh, I know why! There's your act of true love right there! And rush out onto the frozen lake. Now, I will say that this is a pretty good place to have the climax. Blinding snow, ships going everywhere, everyone is so close yet so far. It actually kind of makes it a really tense scene. But... Again, this movie isn't inventive enough to actually have a climax as interesting as the environment. So we have a good versus evil with a fake out death. Anna! Oh, Anna! Anna! <laughs> Anna? Elsa's true love for a sister she hasn't spent time with in more than a decade saves Anna and melts away the snow. Saving the town we never really cared about from a danger that only lasted less than 48 hours. Woo-hoo. Hans gets what he deserves for being wasted opportunity, and that trading guy I never mentioned will go unmentioned for all the purpose he served. Which was none. And that's Frozen, Disney robots saying sorry for shit that was never wrong while continuing that behaviour in the most shallow, money-grubbing way possible. This movie doesn't challenge the audience, it handholds it. It doesn't do anything new, it doesn't push the envelope. This movie is the equivalent of a rich, spoiled kid dressing all black and thinking they're edgy. Frozen is as edgy as a round sponge cake in the middle of an empty room, and was as interesting to watch. This is a paint-by-numbers princess film. You know what the shame is? This movie could have really been something. Wouldn't it have been cooler to see Anna be this tough but stubborn go-getter, whose ambition and pride is sometimes a bit ahead of her? A character kind of like Nausicaa, capable instead of pretending to be all 
forward and different when really she's the worst Disney princess we've ever had. Wouldn't it have been cool to have Elsa be so scared she turns to hate as a means of getting strength in herself, something that does happen to people, only to finally see the beauty in her gift and how making her instead of destroying is real strength. Actual character struggle instead of weak flip-flopping. Imagine if we spent real time in the town, so we cared about it being in danger. Imagine if there was no forced villain and Hans genuinely was in love with Anna but was too naive to see the, that he was actually just in love with the idea of love, not love itself, something that young people do encounter. How neat and really progressive would it have been if Kristoff was really just a good friend with Anna? Perhaps friends since childhood, showing that you can have love for someone who you're not related to without being in love with them. A lesson so few people learn. Instead, we get an adorable twit being helped by a guy blander than bread to save her bipolar sister while having a love story with a guy who's a weaker villain than Chairface. The movie rushed through genuinely interesting scenes to make time for pointless crap. Why rush through the childhood to make time for Olaf gags? I don't see the gain here. Why rush through character development for a chase with wolves that doesn't actually help anything? I don't get it. If you like the filler being the main focus, then you'll love this movie. But if you like interesting characters and a suspenseful plot, then I'd say fuck this shit with a fiery spork. I'm done. Frozen, you're dead.